Hi everybody, it's NFP week, so the US reporting job numbers for March. Couldn't come at a more interesting time given the moves that we've seen in bond markets. Basically the bond market pricing in a slowdown including in the US, so we're looking for a little bit of confirmation or denial of that theory. I'll discuss our thoughts on how the move in interest rates could affect forex markets and indices. And worth noting, I'm recording this before the original Brexit deadline expires, but I'm assuming Theresa May's deal hasn't made it and the deadline has been extended to April 12. So we can discuss a bit more of Brexit, perhaps more in next week's video. Now, as always, we'll start with the economic calendar. Uh, China manufacturing data is one to watch given China's prominent role in global growth concerns. Uh, the Eurozone CPI is expected to hold steady, but we can expect a drop in bond yields if there is a miss and, and some weakness in the Euro too potentially if that drop in yields in the bonds outpaces the drop in in Treasury yields. Now Euro dollar is back near that 112 mark, so this data could in fact be the, the one that breaks the camel's back in terms of this long term horizontal range, i.e. if the data at the Eurozone is soft enough and perhaps some good data from the US, then we could see Euro finally break below 112, but let's see. Uh, the RBA rate decision counter to what we said last week, the RBNZ shocked the market by directly stating it was expected to cut rates next. So we'd reference the decent GDP number that came in line, thought maybe that the RBNZ was in a better position than the RBA, um, but apparently not. So given the RBNZ have turned dovish, like a lot of other central banks, uh, maybe the RBA doubles down as well and makes some more explicit uh, expectation or forecast of a rate cut. Uh, perhaps an outside chance they actually cut rates, uh, but the, the default expectation is that they hold rates steady. Uh, Non-farm payrolls being the big one to watch for next week, but I'll discuss that more in just a moment. Then as far as corporate earnings next week, uh, the ones that we'll be monitoring are the ones shown here. Now getting back specifically to non-farm payrolls. So the context that we're operating in is that we had that very poor number, just 20,000 created in February, but we had a very good number in January. So what we're basically looking for in March is either a confirmation of one of those extremes or some sort of form of normalization. As perhaps would be expected, economists expecting the normalization. So 175,000 jobs and 0.2% month over month being the average consensus forecast. Uh, the, the wage growth is down from 0.4% last month. So any disappointment here, and that should be fuel to this uh, rally in bond markets and, and see bond yields trip even lower. Um, I think if we do see another pull down in, in, uh, in bond markets, uh, in bond yields, that could in fact pull equities down as well, um, which have so far survived uh, what's been going on in the bond market. A better number, uh, maybe the, the place to look then is the dollar because the dollar has actually been strengthening running up into this number. Um, not so much a matter of US data, but more just weakness elsewhere. Um, best of a bad bunch, if you like. Um, so the dollar has been trending higher against the euro um, and it's also potent uh, there is also potentially a bit of a, a pullback due in gold and silver, uh, but the dollar seems like it's losing a bit of steam against the yen. So logic there in terms of NFP, potentially in terms of good data, maybe you're looking more towards the euro and gold to drop, while if it's bad data, maybe in terms of price trends, uh, you will more likely see a, a bigger drop in dollar yen. So it is the beginning of the second quarter next week. So worth noting that our Q2 Outlook report will be released. So check your inboxes for that one. Um, if we can just summarize what happened in Q1, there was a massive rally in US equities. Uh, we're actually back close to near all time highs again, unbelievably. Um, European and Asian equities also saw a, a quarter of gains, but not nearly as impressive as the US. Um, in terms of the previous significant peaks on the price chart, um, the major European and, and, uh, and Asian indices generally not recovered even 50% of that drop that we saw from, from the, as I said, the, the significant peaks last year um, in the DAX around May, um, in the Nikkei, for example, around October. Uh, in the FX market, very much um, uh, outside of perhaps the, the British pounds on an intraday basis and the Turkish lira perhaps, uh, characterized by very low volatility, specifically with the dollar, very low volatility. Um, so by that nature, 
Uh, what you tend to expect after a period of low volatility is for volatility to spike. So again, that may be um, another reason to think that we finally get a breakout on this euro dollar range um, when the high volatility finally kicks in. Um, oil has had a good quarter as well, very much like equities with WTI taking out the $60 mark. Gold started well, but sold off um, towards the end into a more choppy range. So again, looking ahead, uh, FX, you know, the main expectation you could put through is via the volatility. But in terms of equities, of course, it's a higher trend um, in equities. So always difficult to fight the trend. But what you would say is as the prices move higher, as shares move higher, the probability of short trades starting to work again after such an epically big quarter um, is getting higher. Uh, and the risk is getting smaller. Now, what do I mean by that? Of course, there's always risk when placing trades, but um, if you're looking to sell these indices down uh, while they're below their previous record highs, well, we're closer to those record highs now. So uh, you're, not, you're, you're basically selling higher, which is obviously what you want to do when you're short selling. And you can probably just say the same thing for oil prices. Well, I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck with trading this week. And if you want to see these videos as soon as they're released, please follow myself and LCG on YouTube and social media.